In this video, we will be determining the pH of a solution obtained by dissolving or by mixing a weak acid with a strong base. Here is a problem for you. If 30 milliliters of a 0 0.100 mole per liter of sodium hydroxide is added to 50 milliliters of 0 0.100 moles per liter of acetic acid, what will be the pH of the resulting solution? Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 into 10 to the power of negative 5. So here we are given a mixture of an acid and a strong base. The acid is a weak acid and we are also provided with the dissociation constant for the weak acid. This is what we are going to do. The first step would be to determine the limiting reagent because the quantities of acids and bases that we have, they do not appear to be equal. So we will determine the number of moles of acid and base we have and determine the limiting reagent and from then and from there we will move on. In order to do that, we will use the equation N is equal to C times V. In step 2, we will determine the concentration of the reaction that is obtained after the reaction has taken place. In order to do that, we will determine the number of moles and the new volume and from the new volume we will calculate the new concentration. In step 3, we will use the dissociation constant Ka for a weak acid and from that we will determine the hydrogen ion concentration after substituting the value for the dissociation constant of the acid which is 1.8 into 10 to the power of negative 5. Finally using this hydrogen ion concentration we can determine the pH of the given solution. That is the objective. So let's get started. The first step would be calculating the number of moles of acetic acid that is present in 50 milliliters of the given solution and here it says N is equal to C times V or the number of moles that we have is 0 0.100 moles per liter times 50 ml times 10 to the power of negative 3 that is to convert the milliliters to volume is going to change into 5 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles of acetic acid is present. Next, we will calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide or hydroxide ions. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, therefore it's completely dissociated. The concentration of hydroxide ions are equal to the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide or hydroxide ions would be equal to 0 0.100 mole per liter times 30 times 10 to the power of negative 3 liters. That will give you 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles. So we have determined the number of moles of acetic acid, the weak acid that is present and we have also determined the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we have. Since the number of moles of acetic acid 5 into 10 to the power of negative 3 is larger than 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3, we know the limiting reagent is going to be the reagent that is completely used up and in this case it is going to be sodium hydroxide which implies that the resulting mixture will have more of unreacted acetic acid and therefore this will make the solution acidic and therefore we can determine the pH of the solution. So the next thing to do would be to determine the molar concentration of the reactants. Since we determine the number of moles of each of the reactants, it, it would be easy to determine the number of moles of unreacted acid and the number of moles of conjugate base that is formed. And this is how we do that, by generating an ice table. We have the initial concentrations. This is what is given to us, 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles of sodium hydroxide or hydroxide ions. And 5 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles per liter of acetic acid. And when we start the reaction, we do not have any acetate ions. The change in concentration is going to be minus 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3. Since hydroxide ions are the limiting reagent, all of the hydroxide ions are going to react. It also means that, that there's a decrease in concentration of the hydroxide ions. Since uh, 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles of sodium hydroxide has completely reacted, that is also going to take away 
3 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles of acetic acid from the total concentration of 5 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles per liter of hydrogen ions. Now, since the reaction produces acetate ions, which is a strong conjugate base, the number of moles of acetate ions that are formed is going to be 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles per liter. So, when the reaction is done, what remains is going to be the equilibrium of final concentration, and this is the final concentration of the reactants that we have. The number of moles of unreacted acetic acid is going to be 2 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles per liter, and the number of moles of acetate ion that is going to remain in the mixture is going to be 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles per liter. Since sodium hydroxide is a strong base, it's going to completely react with the acetic acid producing the same number of moles of acetate ions, which is a strong conjugate base. The next step would be determining the new concentration. And in this case, we first determine the total volume of the solution. Since we started with 0.05 liters of azadic acid and 0.03 liters of sodium hydroxide, the total volume of the solution is going to be 0.08 liters, which means we started with 50 ml and 30 ml, we converted them to liters. Therefore, the final volume of the solution is 0.08 liters or 80 milliliters. The concentration of acetic acid is equal to C is equal to N over V. We have determined the number of moles earlier and now we have the volume. Therefore, substituting these values, this is what we get. The final concentration of acetic acid is going to be 0.025 m or moles per liter. Similarly, the concentration of acetic acid which gives us acetate ions after neutralization will be equal to C is equals to N over V and the number of moles we have is 3 into 10 to the power of negative 3 moles in 0.08 liters. Therefore, the final concentration of the acetate ion is going to be 0.0375 moles per liter. Now that we have the concentrations of the acid that is unreacted and the concentration of the acetate ions that are formed after the neutralization, we can determine the hydrogen ion concentration using the dissociation constant. So to determine the pH of the solution, first we will write the equilibrium constant expression for the dissociation of the weak acid. HC2H3O2 reversibly give you H positive and C2H3O2 negative. From this, we can write the dis equilibrium constant expression for the uh, reaction or for the dissociation. Ka is equal to H positive into acetate ion divided by number of moles of undissociated acid. Rearranging the equation, H positive is equal to Ka times concentration of undissociated acetic acid divided by the concentration of the acetate ions. And next, we are going to substitute the values of Ka acetic acid and acetate ions and this is what we will get. The hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 1.2 into 10 to the power of negative 5 moles per liter. Once you get the hydrogen ion concentration all you have to do is plug in this value into the pH equation to determine the pH of the solution. Solving the problem the pH of the resulting solution obtained by mixing 50 milliliters of acetic acid and 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide whose concentrations are known will be equal to 4.92. Since acetic acid is excess reagent, it also makes sense to see that the pH of the solution is less than 7. It is an acidic solution and that's an agreement with what we are looking for. And this is how you determine the hydrogen ion concentration for a reaction between a weak acid and a strong base if the acid is the excess reagent. That's it for now. If you like the video, please don't hesitate to rate, comment and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day. Calculating the pH of buffer solutions and this video is made based on a request. Hopefully this is exactly what you were looking for. In this video, we will be solving a problem in chemical equilibrium where we will determine the equilibrium.